since the midterms are over, and likely my academic career as well, I may as well start reviewing things again, but this time I've negotiated to choose my own films, under the strict supervision of one other socio, who can be seen giving a confirmation nod here. That out of the way, let's talk about someone we all knew and loved, Robin Williams. An entertainer since the mid-1970s, there are few people who had the comedic and dramatic range that Robin possessed. He could take a script and bring it to life with either laughter or heartache. His own ups and downs may have informed his performances, but they created roles that will live on forever. Now, I thought long and hard about which of his many films to review, and I feel I've come upon the perfect one. World's Greatest Dad. <laughs> what? What's wrong? That's a no! A definite no-go! What made you choose that one? Well, it's a touching story about a man whose son accidentally commits suicide under confusing circumstances and... <laughs> That strike one, Psycho. Any other options? Oh, here's one. Robin plays an inspirational teacher that changes the lives of all of his students in Dead Poets Society. Are you even aware what you're doing wrong here? That's a no-go too? Obviously. Okay. Then, let's talk about one of the most beautiful films ever made that touches on the core of spirituality. What dreams may come. Strike three, you're out. What? Why? The fact that you need to ask is appalling. Okay, here. This is the film you'll be reviewing. Toys. Because that's your maturity level. By the way, you're never choosing your own reviews again. You can't be trusted. Have fun. Have fun with toys. I've heard of Stranger Things. Alright, uh, came out in 1992, directed by the same man that did Good Morning Vietnam. That's the one I should have watched. A story about a man saving the innocence of childhood from his evil uncle's intentions. Well, that sounds wrong. I guess I'll give it a try and see what this film does with that weird premise. What was that? Seriously, IMDb, give me some answers here. Alright. Um, okay, according to IMDb, uh, writer, director, producer Barry Levinson spent 10 years developing this concept? And 10 months filming it? What'd he do with all that time? You know what? Let's just start at the beginning. Kenneth Zevo, owner of the most schizophrenic toy company ever, seriously, they have a room dedicated to ballet performances for some reason, he meets with his brother General Zevo to discuss the family business. Kenneth's in the final hours of his life, as indicated by the rate at which his propeller cap spins. Oh dear. I'll call the paramedic, sir. It's his heart. After his operation last year, he hooked up his beanie propeller to his pacemaker. I couldn't come up with a joke dumber than the facts here. And the worst part about it? This propeller pacemaker man is my second favorite character. He knows handing his company off to the military career man is a risky move, but realizes it's the better choice than either his son, played to maximum absurdity by Robin Williams, or his daughter, played by a realistic replica of Joan Cusack. They got everything right but the hair. Neither of these two heirs have the maturity necessary to run the business, so when push comes to shove, Kenneth chooses the man with less whimsy than a noir detective. Seriously, the general makes Humphrey Bogart in the Maltese Falcon look like Columbo. Now, it's clear the film wanted us to see General Zevo as the obvious villain, but for the first 15 minutes I was totally on his side. Mind you, the first quarter of the film is spent doing a tour of the factory. Did I say factory? I meant adult daycare. Here's the doll room where Joan gets to dress up in life-size replicas of cut-out clothes, and here's Robin's excessively loud jacket which he wears to a very important meeting and completely ruins, and there's the clean room for inspecting vomit and... Who does the work around here? Why is everyone acting like they skipped their meds? In short, the general could really do some good here, especially in the matter of efficiency, and that's exactly what I thought he would do, until I learned more about him. I could have had four stars, Daddy, if it wasn't for this cursed British accent of mine. You would have to be stationed in England during my formative years. It's your fault. I went to see a dialect coach, and the best I can do is, you men stand over there, or a minor tension, until further notice. They didn't buy it. 
He's barking mad, just like the rest of his family. When the toy company designers fail to meet the general's demand to build war toys, he starts looking into other options, like the gaming market. Let's watch now as he blows away UN supply vehicles in a video game despite the penalties to his score. as well tattoo Warmonger on his forehead. And the whole political slant is just impossible to ignore, too. May as well add that on to the genre count. So Toys is a politically-minded, dramatic, family-orientated fantasy-slash-comedy. I'm not kidding! I guess it does have the aspects to qualify for each of these subtypes, but for fun, let's nitpick down the list. In drama, Team America World Police had many more moments of tension than this film. Family friendly went out the window with this line. Why? Just want to get laid. <laughs> and as for fantasy, let me put it this way: if toys is a fantasy, it's because of the existence of the sea swine attack pig. Not even kidding. That's a thing in this movie. All right. By that logic, all of the Rocky series can be considered fantasy because of that one scene with the butler robot. Technically true. Totally false. That leaves us with comedy, and for what it's worth. There are funny moments here. Sometimes they're stretched, sometimes they're random, but there are several scenes that made me laugh despite what surrounded them. My favorite comedic moment didn't even have Robin Williams in it, but it did contain my favorite character, LL Cool J as Patrick, the general's son. Is any duplicating going around here when you're not present? Uh... Hmm? Huh? Yeah, maybe. Do you duplicate alone? Oh, you're, really? you're laughing, Miss Tiley. Are you taking my duplication investigation seriously? Or are you disrespecting my duplication investigation? He is so serious here. I love it. In fact, I love his whole character. He's a decisive man that owns his one joke very well. He can hide anywhere. Literally anywhere. It's just impressive to see how many things he pops out of. Also, he's driven to support the right course of action, whatever that may be. When his father tells him to update security and make sure things run more smoothly at the factory, he does exactly that without unnecessary roughness. However, when he discovers it's clear the general snapped long ago, he goes immediately to his cousins to try and stop the madman's scheme. What is his scheme exactly? What you been blowing up? People, army tanks, and helicopters. How many points do you get for blowing up people? Thousand. Train children to fly drones into civilian areas and specifically target people. And this movie was labeled family friendly. After Patrick changes size, he pushes for the police to become involved since, you know, the general is actively breeding an army of miners. There's probably a violation somewhere in there. That's when Robin interjects with this. No, no police. What? Because this is family business your family's done so well containing the situation thus far. Tell me exactly how many murder bots did your uncle commission under your watch? Oh, just a rolling fleet of them, that's no matter. Just send out the old toys, you know, the kid-friendly ones to fight them off. That should work out well. I was kidding! Toy Mageddon may only last for five minutes, but the effect is irreversible. This scene actively killed my childhood. It showed these toys of youth, the archaic wind-up bright spots that entertained children for countless years, and then had them mowed down by a soulless fleet of military hardware. This scene is tragedy. What's worse, it's pointless tragedy. This whole sequence was done with the antique toys advancing on the murder bots, so that one main character, only one, could get away. What a senseless waste. All those... You know what? Let's just finish this. The ending is big and stupid. Exactly what you'd expect from everything leading up to it. And everyone gets there happily ever after. Then the credits show the worst remake of Dumbo I've ever seen. That wire is clearly visible. So, I ask you. What was the point of it all? From this movie, I've learned one invaluable lesson. Not all time is time well spent. Barry Levinson's original vision for this, whatever that may have been, became lost inside of itself. What could have been a dramatic story about corruption infesting a toy factory turned into an overflowing dumpster of ideas slapped together at random. 
The worst part is, there are moments of potential, fleeting instants where you feel that fragility of childhood the director wished to invoke. Then the film splashes a scalding cup of one-liners on you, strikes you with blunt political jabs, and throws all its whimsy into a bucket of slime that it pours over your stunned face. It's apparent that this movie was trying so hard to be everything at once that it succeeded at being nothing. So nothing, three minutes of its content are dedicated to an MTV video parody. That's true dedication to nothingness. So, final verdict? This movie should have been Patrick's story. This man is the only character that grew in any major way during the events of the film. He realized that his father was not the man he thought, and did the right thing even when it meant betraying his flesh and blood. He is the true gem in this. But Robin Williams does have his moments when he gets beyond the one-liners. In them, you can see that despite his sometimes lewd behavior, he still held the whimsy of childhood in his heart. And that's how he will always be remembered. As for this movie, it's best left forgotten. I'd recommend avoiding it in any bargain bin you see, because I assure you that this is no bargain. I'm not even going to throw it in the corner with the girl next door. I've got to find a better place to get rid of this. Oh, let's see. Um, Shredder? No, that's too nice. Flamethrower? Nope, still too good to find. Hey, Silo, what you doing out of class? Kill him been asking to run. Hey, I guess I found a gift for you. Toys? I love this movie! <laughs> Silo, why are you crying? <laughs> Wanna watch it with me? No!